Good morning, everybody. It is 7.53 a.m. in the morning, and I found a place with free Wi-Fi. And that is not stealing it. It says free Wi-Fi. Um, to steal Wi-Fi, that would be very difficult. I wouldn't know how to do that. It'd be like in the air someplace, you know? But uh, anyhow, you guys, listen. This is the time where we need to really be focused on the time that we have. Drawing near to our Lord Jesus Christ. And worshiping God the Father, as Jesus said, in the Spirit. Okay? God is Spirit. He's not about images or idols, you know, like what we do here on this earth. Um, the devil... You know, it's all about idols, you know, making people, putting them up on pedestals, you know, basketball players, but football players, all these idols. I noticed something when I, like I told you, when my football coach tried to hire me at the stadium back in 2014, and he came out of nowhere, but I know how it all happened. This is all spiritual, you guys. That's why I'm saying it's, it's very important to know what we're dealing with here. Because a lot of people are being sucked in when they don't realize this is a spiritual battle. And when you're thinking in the flesh and in the world here, it's easy for them to grab you and offer you what's in the world, okay? And the Bible's clear about this. What good is any of this stuff going to do if you had it all? You can't buy your soul for it, okay? You're going to lose it, okay? Um... This video is going to be about cares of this life, okay? And how the cares of this life will choke out the word, okay? It'll choke it out. The parables to the seeds growing in the garden. When the disciples said, Lord, explain this to us, you know, because they didn't understand it. And he said, those that have been separated, okay, those in these times that have been separated, they're going to understand this. Okay, and then we're going to be growing in this, and that's what's going to get us out of here. This is going to be our oil to get us out of here. That's why I've been warning you about all these other videos where they're talking about worldliness and what China, Russia, and blah, blah, blah is doing. And it's not what the Word is trying to tell us, okay? We're being taken away from it. We're being led away from it, okay? Those people that got those high ratings, got a lot of people on their YouTube channels. Let me tell you something. I got a lot of people on this channel, about 1,250. That's not a whole lot. But between each one of us, if we reach out and reach and we grab two, three, or even four or five people, we got a whole lot of people. And you know what? We're more focused on the truth rather than what's in this world, the cares of this life. Okay, now uh, I can't cover all this in this one video because it's just a lot to do and it's going to take me forever to get it loaded up in here. But we're going to get into Luke <clears throat> and uh, go to Luke 8, 5 through 15, starting out. Okay, let's find it in here. I should have had it open time. Okay, here we go. I got the pages marked. I was ready. You guys, I was ready. I did some searching. There's some others I want to go through too. And uh, this is very important, you guys, because this is what's going to get us, um, this is where we need to be. Okay? The cares of this life, the cares of this world, that's what's going to destroy us. That's what, Look around you. Look at how bad things are. It's from the cares of this life, the cares of this world. Look at it. Even the place where I'm at at this library, man, I'd love to camp out around here, but it's a real bad neighborhood, man. I mean, there's even big churches around here, man. It looks like it's a drug-infested neighborhood. They're, the churches have failed big time. They, they're more into the world. They're not covering what we're going to cover here today, okay? Churches have failed that. They're into prosperity, worldliness, the cares of this life, okay? Where the Word of God says the cares of this life is what chokes out the Word, okay? Okay, here we are, 8, <clears throat> um, 
or yeah, eight, five through 15. Come on, where is it? Okay, eight. Now this is, we're gonna start right out about the sower, okay? A sower went out to sow his seed and, and he, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and was trotted down and the fowls of the air devoured it, okay? Now these are the things that are in this world and some of them fell on rocks and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprang up and with it and choked it. Okay? Remember, the weeds and the tares are growing together. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he, he cried, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples asked him, saying, What might these parables be? Because <clears throat> they didn't understand. Okay? And he said unto them, It is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in, par in parables that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then come to the devil, cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Now, how can the devil come and take it away? Well, come over here. Let's see what China's doing. Let's see what Russia's doing. Let's see what this guy's doing. Let's see what's going on over here. The cares of this life. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy. And these have no root for which for, our, for a while believe. And in time of temptation, they fall away. Now, temptation, how is that? Oh, in the world again. Okay, lustful, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. Look at how people are dressing with tight clothing on and everything. You know, I mean, the way they're doing things, their hair, their makeup, they're worried about what's in the world. That's why they fall away, the temptations from what's in the world. Okay, that's why I keep saying, let it go, let it go. And that which fall among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Okay, with patience. No man, when he has lighted a candle, covereth it and with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but putteth it on a candlestick, which enters in, may see the light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. Now see, when we're doing what's right, um, look at how people, when you say putting it into the light, okay? You see how people are with their drugs? They're, I mean, they're coming out in the open now with it. That's what they're doing and everybody's seeing it. That's their light. Okay, really it's darkness. Which everything that's in this world. Look at the way the lustful living, the way they're dressing, their hair, their nails. Everybody, oh, that's what's in style. Okay, really? And that's why everybody's doing it. It's like that everywhere, huh? Where's the word of God? Why ain't that in style? Do you see what I'm saying? Cares of this life. Okay, now... Jesus' true family, you guys heard me say that several times already. That's those that are doing the will of his Father in heaven. Now, let's go to St. Luke. Um, St. Luke, chapter 9, verse 62. Okay? Okay, 
All right. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, looking back into the world, um, turning back lustful eyes, lustful thinking, those sort of things, okay? That's why he says no man is fit for the kingdom of God. When you know and you see what's going on in this world and you still turn back to what's in this world, the flesh, the lust of it, hmm, this morning, uh, I was having breakfast over there, and I still had a little bit left on a Cracker Barrel card. I really don't like going to that place. It's way over outrated, costs too much money, and uh, I just don't. It's way too expensive for breakfast and stuff in there. Everything's getting too expensive anymore, but that place is very expensive. But uh, I appreciate it, the card and everything, the the person that sent it. Um, I would much rather sit down in a place where I can get me a cheaper breakfast at a half the cost and um, nothing like that. That's just too expensive. It's just a waste of money. But anyhow, um, oh, I was sharing with the waitress in there and uh, it really, really you know, I was like, wow, you know, got the chills. We're, I'm seeing more and more where we're getting close to going home, you guys, really close to going home. What happened was, uh, and I wanted to share this with you guys. See, here's the Cracker Barrel cup. I got my coffee someplace else because it's way too expensive for coffee here. And who knows, this guy's probably doing drugs here and people walking around here. It's unreal what people are doing now. They're doing this stuff right out in the open anymore. Um, anyhow, um, I shared with the waitress this morning, and I told her, you know, I, I said, you realize these are the end times, don't you? And I, and I asked her, uh, and she goes, oh, yeah. She goes, yeah, I can see it's happening. And I showed her a video with the angels, the orbs that land and come into us and come out of us, how the spirit realm's working. And she's going, wow. She goes, I do see that. And I said, well, our bodies are nothing but a host. Okay, this is about, this is a spiritual battle we're having here. We're either filled with the Holy Spirit or you're going to be filled with the devil and what's going on, the wickedness in this life, the world. And, uh, and I told her, I said, the churches have fallen from the truth. And they're all about prosperity and what's of the world. And I said, they, they haven't been teaching the truth. This is about spirit. And uh, she, you know, didn't believe it. Or, she, you know, she looked at me and, uh, let me tell you something, man. When she looked at me, her eyes were so dark. I felt like as if she left and a demon came up in her. And it looked at me and it was like, like it was serious. And it knew, um, yeah, she was not, um, she was always walking around like she was in a hurry, but not happy at all. You could see that. That's why I wanted to share with her about the word, letting her know that this is about over. And let me tell you, uh, there's, there's a lot of people that have that spirit in them right now. And that's the reason why they're, um, not happy. They're very like miserable, upset type of people, okay? This is what you have to be careful with because these these spirits are like dormant. And sometimes when I talk with these people, I cause that spirit to uh, awaken like. That's what it feels like, like they're awakening. Um, and I seen it in her eyes, man. And it was almost like hate, a lot of hate. And... Uh, I just told her, I said, God bless you, man. I said, you know, just remember, this is all, it's a spiritual battle here, man. We have to overcome, overcome this. And, uh, but yeah, this morning, that was one of my first, well, one, no, she was my second one that I shared with. I, my first one I shared with is where I got my coffee. I didn't get it here. It's a Cracker Barrel cup. But, uh, the reason I had to change cups, because the other cup I had, 
was bent on the top. When you went to take a drink, it was leaking because the styrofoam was bent. But she gave me a free cup to put that my other coffee in. And, uh, you know, she was a nice woman, but um, the wrong spirit was in her, you know. Like I said, as soon as I shared with her that, she didn't want to be around me no more. You know, as soon as you share with these people, if they got that demonic spirit in them, they're going to uh, try to distance themselves from you. You know, just don't be surprised when that happens. Okay? Now, here we are. I'm, all this is going to be in St. Luke, okay? Now, we did... Uh, now we're in uh, 10, 38 through 42, chapter 10. There's a lot in this, you guys. A lot. And remember, this is about spirit, you know? Jesus Christ is Lord of hosts. Churches don't even discuss that. The people in the church don't realize that. If they were discussing that, they would realize this life is very short, very temporary, and it's a spiritual battle, and this body is a temporary host. It's something that we dwell in just for a little while, and other things can dwell in it too. We are not alone. These bodies are can be used. That's why Jesus warned, be careful what you do. Don't sin again or something worse can happen. He was trying to warn people. But do you think they would have understood that message then that I'm telling you today? You know what I mean? Just watching those people throwing all kinds of stuff over there in that other house. Vacant, I guess it's a vacant house, but man, it's it's a heck. You know, I like the Wi-Fi here, but I don't know. This place. Anyhow, here we are, 10, uh, 38 through 42. This is where Jesus, you guys know these stories. Jesus visits Mary and Martha. <laughs> You guys remember that story? One of them was what? Busy. What was she busy with in the cares of what? Where the other one wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. Do you see what I'm saying? This is very important, you guys. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. Thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, <clears throat> which shall not be taken away from her. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Man, this is where we, can, we, we take this time here with patience, like Jesus said. I want out of here too, you guys. I want out of here. I want to go home so bad. You know, I, I, it's... I don't like waking up like this every day. I really don't. I've been doing it for a long time. I told you guys I started back in September of 2015. <clears throat> but if I only focus on uh, on how uncomfortable, and it is not comfortable. If I only focused on that, how much more difficult would it be? You know, a lot more difficult, you know. So I, I what I do, it's like Jesus says here, when you put your hand to that plow, you just keep going. And I try to be grateful for everything. Like I said yesterday, or a couple days ago, somebody sent me some extra money, okay? And it was out of nowhere. I didn't expect that. And uh, But I knew I needed tires in the back of this truck really bad. That's why I say I slid on the ice because I, I balled tires in the back. I had no traction. And that's why I lost my mirror and everything. But anyhow... Uh, <clears throat> um, I got those new tires, you know. The Lord supplies us with our needs. He does. And it's the Holy Spirit. You guys, something compelled you to reach out and do that. And let me tell you, those tires, I got just enough money. 
those tires came to about $178 or something like that with taxes for the two rear tires. I had just enough money to do that. Actually, a little extra. A little extra. But I had just enough money to do that. I was like, wow. I, you know, I said, tires, got to get those tires, man. Something was telling me. You guys, I know you've had this happen before where you felt like you should do something. You felt like you should do something, but you didn't listen. You just didn't listen. And you went about the cares of this life. And all of a sudden, you, an accident happened. And you go, man, I should have listened. You know, you heard that inner voice telling you to do it, but you didn't do it. You see, that's what I was hearing. You know, Mark, get those tires. Go get those tires. Go get those tires. So, yeah, they're going to last me till I leave here. How much longer? I don't know. You know, I, yeah, I'm hoping... I told you that uh, in May, in May, according to that photo I got, that angel, I took that in April, but in May was my birthday. I'll be 57, and that photo is 77. I'm hoping, you know, right around then. Because I know the Antichrist is going to rise from the ashes, okay? So a lot of people have to die. And what does the Word of God say? No flesh would have survived had he not intervened early, Okay. Now, we also know this year is when they expect the 5777. Don't they expect their Messiah to show up this year? And doesn't the word of God say that he's going to set on the uh, throne, doesn't it? It says that. Okay, we don't have that much more time. This is February, yes. May, March is coming up. And uh, they, they expect him in 5777 to show up. And he's going to have to sit on that temple mound. And they say it's going to be built during troubled times. Okay? During troubled times. And uh, I'm hoping we're gone then. And then it's going to be a horrible stuff happening after that. And it's going to come back to back to back to back. And it says that place will be built during troubled times. Okay? We won't be here for that because no flesh would have survived. And then we know where the end battle is going to be. It's going to be around Israel. But it's not going to happen there because the word of God already says that. He's going to, God's going to draw them all like a hook in their jaw. And he's going to pull them all in there at the same time. This is a spiritual battle. I'm telling you, he's going to do it. And they're going to do, he can put it in their mind and their heart. He knows what's in our minds and in our hearts. He knows it. So, you know, we need to, we need to get on track here. Because he, he didn't, he didn't separate us to, to not understand or get the truth to know what's going on here. Now, you just heard what I said about Martha, Martha. Okay, that was a story within itself. He wouldn't let Mary be taken away. Mary was interested in knowing what the truth was. Okay? Now let's go to 11, 33 through 36. 11, 33 through 36. Oh, man. I just lost a page in here, but that's all right. I'll find it. Okay. Okay. All right. 11, 33 through 36. 23 minutes already. No man, when he has lighted a candle, putteth it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. And the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But, when thy eye is evil, the body also is full of darkness. Yeah. That's what I told you happened to me this morning, man. When I was sharing with that lady, man, it was like darkness, man. Like like everything got real dark around her eyes, man. Like a like dark, you know. And I was and I seen it immediately, and I was like, oh, not good, not good. And she got to being busy walking away from me. And she goes, yeah, you take care. You take care. You know. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. 
That's what it looked like, man. It looked like it was all dark in her. If thy body, if if thy whole body therefore be full of light, having no part dark, uh, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle does give thee light. See, that's why I say the eyes are the windows to the soul. You know, have you ever been around somebody sharing with somebody and all of a sudden you've seen a darkness come? This is, I'm telling you right now, if you look, this is where you're going to start seeing it. Oh, man, I'm telling you, man, I've seen that darkness. And I even told you that before I read this. Okay, I just marked some of these spots. I didn't even read all this yet because it takes time to do all that. And I wanted to do it with you guys. Um. It's the eyes, man. They're, you look into people's eyes when you start sharing with them. And if you see a darkness and you don't see the light in their eyes, that means their body's full of darkness, man. It's full of darkness. I quit wearing sunglasses, man. As soon as I seen what was going on in this world, man, my sunglasses don't need them no more, man. I don't. I'm gonna. Keep, I want to see. I want to see. You know, this is what time it is. Okay. Here we are. Um, 12, 12, 22 through 42. Or 22 through 34. The teaching about anxiety. Okay? And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought of your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than the remnant. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have store or, nor barn. And God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his uh, stature, one cubit. If ye then be not able to do that which thou is least, why take ye thought for the rest? You know, how did prosperity uh, preaching ever get started? I, I don't see it no place in this Bible do I see it. That's why I say today you see them writing sermons, but they don't. They open their Bible and they say a couple of little words that are in there, and then they just proceeded to twist it from there. Okay? Consider the lilies, how they grow and not toil. Toil not, they spin not. And, and yet I say unto you, the Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, ye of little faith? You see how I'm saying how I, you know, like yes, a couple days ago, I had that extra money in there in the, uh, in the thing to get tires, you know, my two near, rear tires. I needed them too. I wasn't saying nothing to nobody. I just got it, you know. It was there and I got it. I went and I did it. And I'm, now I'm sharing it with you. I'm telling you what I did, you know. That's how it works. The Holy Spirit reaches out. Now I know the mockers aren't going to like this. They're going to hate it. They're going to hate hearing this, but, you know. I told them, you're not going to stop the Holy Spirit. Greater is the Holy Spirit that is in us than what is in the world. And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all the things shall be added unto you. See, he's telling us to put first the kingdom of God, to put that first before anything here. Don't take any cares of this life. He'll give you what you need, you know? Yes, I'm living in my truck. This is all I need until I leave. 
Okay, I, I don't, we don't have much longer. And I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Not everybody's supposed to be doing what I'm doing. But you're going to get the message, what you need. Okay? God has provided you with the things that you have. You, you get it. I don't know how you got it, where you're at today. But you're getting this message now. Okay? And you're probably understanding it. But we're getting ready to leave now. And now he's telling you this. Put First, the kingdom and put away the cares of this life and don't let people on YouTube lead you back into the cares of this life because we already know what's going to happen here. The word of God tells us this. Russia is going to destroy it. They got missiles called Satan. Okay, it's going to be destroyed. The word of God says it's going to be burned by fire, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not. Have you noticed a lot of these people leading you back into these things like they're fearful? Ooh, this fear of this. Little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He didn't separate us to be fearful. And look at some of these YouTubers, man. They're trying to be fearful about every little thing out there. Trying to get you to watch this, watch that. Because look at what they might do. Well, let me tell you something. The Lord separated me, man. And if you're acting like one of us, and yet you're fearful about stuff, then you're a liar and you're a deceiver. I can tell by the things that you're doing. Sell that ye have and give elms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens. That faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupts. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let me tell you something. Do not be given to these rich mega churches. Don't be doing it. They're hoarding for themselves. They're building bigger barns, bigger churches. Look at the Pope sitting in his wealthy, like he's a, like he's a king. And all this stuff. You see, and all these other churches flock to them. You know, and birds of a feather flock together, don't they? We need to be helping one another, okay? And you don't have to look too far to see somebody that you can help. And you can do more than what these churches are doing. And you know what a lot of them are doing? They're buying, uh, maybe buying a pallet of rice and sending it over there. That's about it, but they're keeping most of it. They're keeping most of everything they're getting. I mean, how is it that they're living so high on the hog? How is it that they're so wealthy? And why are they living like they really truly believed and trusted in God? Why are they living in mansions? Why do they got to have jets? You know, you see what I'm saying? It's crazy, man. It's crazy. All right, that was 12. Now I'm going to go to 14, 26 through 27. 14. This is all just in St. Luke. And look at how much time it took. All right. If any man comes to me and hates not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. If any man comes to me and hate not his father and mother and wife, other words, if you love all them, um, he says you cannot be his disciple. You know? See, to be his disciple, see, I don't hate my, my brothers and my sisters. They don't have anything to do with me at all, okay? I don't hate them, but I I follow Christ 100%, you know? I mean, that's I know I was called... You guys see this. You know, you're going to know if you're called. That's why you see that angel blowing that trumpet over my head, okay? Not all of us are called to do this. And let me tell you something, man. The devil's going to come after you, too. He will come after you, I promise you. It's, it's, I guarantee you. There's a lot, that's a whole nother story there. Um, 1433. So likewise, 
whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. See, I, I had to literally give up everything. You know what I mean? I've been driving around in this truck, you know, but this truck is just about burnt out. It's only good for so long. I mean, I've worn it out, you know. I'm, I've got a couple hundred thousand miles on it now. I traveled all over. But as far as I'm concerned, I gave this truck to the Lord. The Lord provided me with this to get me around. And people say, ah, oh, why don't you walk around? Because they don't want me to succeed in doing nothing, you know. But they don't. But they do know this. Jesus had help. All right, he had Lazarus, the wealthy man, that probably helped them get around, to help them with coins that they fed people. They did different things. Um, they had mules. They had their tents on them where they could move stuff around. They had boats to get them across the shores. Okay, what have I got? I've got this truck. I sleep in it. This is my tent. Is it? It's not real comfortable. You know, it's very uncomfortable. But I'm grateful. I'm not complaining because uh, it keeps me out of the rain. It keeps me sheltered. You know what I mean? But you guys can clearly see that angel blowing that trumpet. Okay? Our time's about up, man. We don't have much time. We really don't. I better load this up. This is going to take a while. It took a while just to do that. Let me tell you something. I want to do some more on this tomorrow or later today maybe. Romans, uh, Corinthians, Philippians, Colossians, Hebrews, James, and 1 John. I mean, this is just cares of this life. You know what I mean? Where did this prosperity come from? How did this prosperity get start started? Yeah, we're passing through this world. It's not about... Um, what people are doing today? They say it's it's twisted and perverted here. It's crazy. Let me get this loaded up. Hopefully, it'll load up pretty fast. God bless each and every one of you, and I hope and pray that you guys get something out of this message. And remember what I said, man. People are leading you back into the cares of this life with fears. You know what's Russia doing? What's China doing? Who cares what they're doing? I can tell you what the Word of God. Why don't you tell me what the Word of God is doing? You know why they're not they're 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 deceivers. I'm telling you, they're coming in all shapes and forms, man. Remember the wheat and the tares; they grew together. Okay, if they were gonna be doing anything at all on YouTube, they'd be telling you what's in the Word of God, not leading you back into the fears of what's uh, in this world. Don't be led away, okay? Because we can't get this in the churches. This is our only opportunity right now. And I'm, I'm seeing too many people leading the way into different things, you know. It's got nothing to do with the written word of God. God bless you guys, man. Please, I hope you pray you guys get something out of this message. And remember what it said, the eyes are the windows to the soul, okay. If they're looking really, really dark, it's probably really, really dark on the inside too, okay. God bless you.